hi welcome welcome back my name is Carson and this is my channel where I chat about what I'm knitting today I have a podcast for y'all so settle in grab a nice coffee or drink or whatever and let's just get rolling so hello I'm back with a podcast and I am excited to share what I've been knitting because I have been knitting <laughs> um, to put it lightly yeah, fall is on my mind. I don't know where y'all live, but where I live, it is still hot. <sighs> it's still hot, but I am knitting to try to will the fall weather in because fall is on my mind. I want to be cozy and I'm definitely warm, <laughs> not by choice, but I would like to be warm by choice, you know, um, and cozy. Yeah, I just... I love fall. It's my favorite season. I think it's a lot of knitters' favorite seasons. There's pumpkins and there's hot coffee, which this is a year-round thing for me, but apple cider. Love apple cider. Yeah, just a lot of fun things that come with fall. Halloween. So, I and sweaters. Sweaters. Big cozy sweaters. Uh, and socks and hats. So, yeah, it feels like this is truly the knitting season. Besides, of course, you know, winter. So yeah, I have been, like I said, trying to knit and will the fall weather. I haven't succeeded yet. Um, Texas, it, like I said, it's still really hot. That's okay. It'll eventually cool off and I'll have some nice stuff to wear. Um, let's see. I guess I'll just get rolling and start talking about my finished objects. First off, I always get the name of this one wrong. I will, of course, put everything down below, like, the name of the pattern and the designer along with links in the description because I am terrible at naming. I'm also doing this really early in the morning. Not really early. It's like eight o'clock but before work so my mind might be I might be a little tired. So just you know forewarning but this is my finished object or one of them. This is called I think it's called My Little Secret Crop by Jessie May. She is the queen of, seems like, summer patterns, but she has um, some sweaters and stuff too, some tops. So yeah, this is my third time knitting this. If you watch my last podcast, I think, I knit a version in some yellow cotton. This is different. I don't know if I showed this in my last podcast. It might have been a whip. So this pattern is pretty customizable, as in you can use lots of different yarn weights, and the gauge it says doesn't really matter, but I found that it you know, the finished object is different depending on what yarn you use. So the last yarn I used was a sport weight yarn and it was really a light, thinner fabric and it didn't really mold to my body. This one is DK weight and it kind of sort of molds a bit more because um, it's ribbing. It's, what is it, three by three ribbing? Yeah, so I used DK weight this time, but honestly it's still kind of like a looser not as loose as my other one because I knit the size extra small this time, but it's still, it doesn't like really cinch in like ribbing usually does, but it's definitely because of my yarn choice. So for this one, I use Patton's Linen. It is a linen cotton blend. Let's see. 65% cotton, 35% linen, so mostly cotton, but the linen is there. It is definitely there and I can feel it and I knew knitting on this. I was like, oh, I don't know how this is going to feel on my body because the linen's pretty rough. Um, and I've knit with linen before, like a summer cotton linen blend, but it was a thinner weight yarn. And the garment I was knitting was a bit, had a little bit more positive ease, so it wasn't like on my body, but this one's on my body. Uh, and I can, it's not scratch, well, no, I take that back. It is a bit scratchy. It's not itchy though but I can tell when I'm wearing it. I wore it for a while, a couple days ago, this past weekend, and I really like the way it looks. I love this color. I kind of knit this to be a transitional piece for the summer and fall since it is still really hot here in Texas normally around this time of the year. So I'm not sure about the fate of this. It does fit better than my yellow one. My yellow one, I think I knit the size small and this one's a size extra small, but it's still, like I said, it doesn't really mold to my body. So I think next time, because I do want to knit this pattern many times, it's just a great staple piece. It has a square neckline and it's, um, this one is pretty cropped, so you can knit it longer. 
what was I saying? <laughs> I think the next time I knit this pattern, I'm gonna go down a needle size just to see if it gets that like cinched. And I think I'll probably just use cotton, like 100% cotton next time. But yeah, I did Ginny's surprisingly stretchy bind off for the back because the very first time I knit this pattern forever ago, I also knit the size extra small, but it was way too tight on the back because I just did a regular bind off and I guess I didn't do it very loosely. So this is Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off and it is stretchy and it worked for me. Like this is my preferred, if it was just, if it would just mold a bit more, this would be my preferred fit for sure. So now I know next time knit the extra small, go down a needle size, do Jenny surprisingly, whatever. <laughs> Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off for the back again. Um, I like the shoulder straps, how, um, like the length of them. I do think next time I need to knit this a bit longer. <laughs> I would love to make a black one actually. Like get a black DK or even worse away cotton. I think that would be nice. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this as this garment or rip it back. I feel like, I don't even know what I would want to knit. Maybe a looser weight garment? Like, um, not looser weight, but just one that is a bit more flowy and doesn't sit on my skin. Even though it would definitely still touch my skin. <laughs> and it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, like I said, it's not scratchy. No, it is scratch. No. Gosh, this is why I don't film in the mornings usually. It's not itchy, but it is a little scratchy for me. But I am pretty sensitive about like sensory things. I can tell when things are there. So I think this might be a nice bag. <laughs> like I was thinking maybe it could be a big bag or something. I don't really know. Cause I have a whole ball left and maybe, I don't even know where, I definitely had some leftovers, just like a little bit. So I have roughly two balls here. If I rip this back that I could use for something else. So I don't know. Like I said, it could be a nice bag. <laughs> Unsure. But for now, I think I'll keep it. Like, it's a, almost, hopefully, warmer, not warmer weather, colder weather will be coming. So maybe I'll just leave this and deal with it next summer, spring. I don't know. Not sure. But like I said, I really like the way I knit it. Like, all the choices I made in terms of the sizing this time. And... The bind off but just not sure about my yarn choice but it's such a pretty color yeah so that's that one i love this pattern i don't think i've knit a pattern three times before besides this one so i, I would truly knit it again so yeah that's all my thoughts about that one not disappointing but a learning experience about yarn choice i actually have a few finished objects today so i'll get into the next one which happened to be some colorwork socks. Oh my gosh. Look at these bad boys. I don't think I had these casted on in my last podcast. I really don't think I did. These are called Go With The Flower Socks. They are colorwork, as you can see. They have these nice retro Nordic looking flowers. I think that's what it kind of comes across or even almost like vintage-y flowers. And what can I say about these? I feel like it's been a lifetime since I've knit these. I probably knit them a month or two ago. And I knit them so fast. Like, fast. I, if you watched my last podcast, you know I had a trip coming up, which I have now taken, and maybe I'll talk about that later. Because uh, I do have a project that kind of relates to that trip. But I had a work trip um, that I was really nervous about, just for like flying and, you know, solo traveling. Turned out good turned out great but i was in like panic sock knitting mode for a while and i busted these babies out in like a week or two i'm talking busted them out <laughs> and i love them i do have some things to say would recommend this pattern for sure like look how pretty the color work is i tried really hard to be mindful of my tension it has a shadow wrap heel and i'm converted i'm converted from a heel flap and gusset, which I enjoy the fit of, but I don't like knitting. I've never liked knitting it. I just get really bored. I don't like going back and forth with the slip stitch, you know, pattern. But I did this and I was kind of nervous about trying a new heel. I don't know why, it just seems like a lot of effort, but I'm so glad I did. 
because I have knit this heel on different socks, which I'll show in a minute. <laughs> Again, another panic knit. Panic knit. Um, but this heel is so fun to knit. It's easy to do. And what I love about it is that I can tell exactly where I am. Um, like if I set it down, I could pick it back up and be like, okay, I'm here. Which I feel like with German short row socks or, um, like just other type of short row socks, I, it, like, I don't think I could confidently do that. <laughs> so I love the shadow wrap heel and there's no, um, let's see. There's really no holes. Like in my German short row heels, I always get big holes, but this one has zero holes. It's tight. It fits nice. Yeah, I think I'm converted. At least, you know, if, if I'm not in the mood to knit a heel flap and guess it, I'm gonna substitute out for a shadow wrap heel because I loved it. And I love how these socks just have like the teeny tiny cuff right here, maybe like half an inch. Or not have, I don't know, yeah, like a centimeter, I don't know. <laughs> Just like a teeny tiny cuff. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed these socks, but I I know this is a thing with a lot of Colorwork socks. They're really hard to get over my heel. I can do it, but it's hard. And every time I do it, I feel like some of the yarn might break. Just trying to get it over my heel. But once it's over the heel, they look great and they fit great. It's just getting it over the heel. I think the, just because of the color work. So next time I knit these, cause I do want to knit them again and I actually have yarn to knit them again. I think I'm going to cast on for my size, which is the 64 stitch size and then increase to the next size before doing the color work. So I think the next size is like a 72 maybe. So I think I would start in 64 increase to get a bigger stitch count, do the color work in that stitch count because there's a motif for that specific size. And then I will just decrease again to get back to my 64 stitch count. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense to me. I mean, that's what I've done with the stone knits, stone knit or stone knits. A lot of her patterns um, kind of have that. I don't know about a lot actually, I've only done a couple, but a few patterns of hers I've knit color work kind of take you through how to do that just to make them fit a bit better. So I think I'm going to do that next time. Um, just so it'll go over my ankle a little bit easier. Well, what else can I say? These look so long to me. Whenever I do a short row heel, they just, the foot looks so hilariously long, but yeah, they fit. I have to really, really try hard to get them over my ankle. Like I said, once they're over, they're there. So I'm so excited to wear these and they're um, definitely, oops dropped them. They're definitely ankle socks. I think next time I knit them too, I'll knit them to be um, longer, just like regular size, maybe like six inch leg. So I might knit a bit of just stockinette and then the flower motif and then a bit of stockinette. Or maybe I'll just do the flower motif and then a bit of stockinette. I don't know. I have time. I haven't cast them on yet, but yeah, I love, I would recommend, just keep in mind, like with a lot of color work socks, I know that's an issue, is like the ankle. Getting them over, not your ankle, getting them, well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, my ankle and my heel. Just getting them over that area is a little tough, but I think if I make some modifications, next ones will be good. So, I love these. What yarn is this knit in? This is knit in Cascade Heritage. The red is, it's this very true deep red. I actually think I know this is called blood orange because whenever I ordered it, I thought it was orange. Uh, it looked a little bit more orange on the website and then it came in and it's like the truest of reds, but it's called blood orange. So, uh, and then the white contrast is a mini stain I got from my sweet sock swap partner last year. I think it's Coats and Co. Um, mini skein, just like this bright true white. And they just look so nice together. I love the high contrast. Oh, wow. I love, I love, I love. Wow, I just want to have like a massive hole in my sweatshirt. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, on to the next, which are more socks. So also panic knit these socks a couple weeks ago. Oh, they're so pretty. So this is just a, I don't really follow a pattern for this. I think I just did three by one ribbing. Three by one, yeah. So I just cast it on 64 stitches, did a little one by one cuff with this cute little contrast and then 
switched to three by one ribbing. Did I don't really know how many inches this is. It's a bit taller than an ankle sock. And then I did the shadow wrap heel again, which you'll see. Love this heel. And it was, I think that's the reason why these socks flew off my needles because usually whenever I knit socks, I knit the leg pretty fast. Like I'm really stoked about it. And then I get to the heel flap and dust it and it takes me forever because I just don't want to knit it anymore. So, I mean, I had no issue. Like I was excited to get to the heel of these. Did it quickly. Like, not that you have to knit quickly, but I was just, it was just like an exciting, fun knit. I was really having fun while also panicking, <laughs> knitting these. Um, but yeah, I love the contrast, little pop of color, pop of color here. These are knit in Cascade Heritage again. I'm not sure what this color is called. It's more of an orangey brick red rather than like a true red like this, the blood orange. You can kind of tell the difference. Um, and then this is... Birch and Lily sock yarn that she gifted me last year whenever we did our knit along, which was so much fun. And she's so sweet. Um, I always forget the name of this color. I'm gonna say it's petroleum. No, petrol. Petrol sock yarn. And this is the yarn that just keeps giving. I've used this yarn in at least three socks, maybe four. One of them, they were the main color. They were ankle socks. And the other ones I've used them in contrast colors and I used them for contrast again and I just, I love it. <laughs> and I still have more of this yarn left. So we'll definitely be seeing it more. It's appeared in lots of socks. But yeah, I just, I love these. I kind of dedicated these to Tress of the Emerald Sea, which was, wait, is that what it was called? It, yeah, I think so. It's by Brandon Sanderson. It was my first Brandon Sanderson book. I loved it. It was so lyrical, so fun, um, such a journey. And if you've read that book, you might know what I'm re referencing, but if you haven't, this does not make any sense. But I'm calling these my spore socks, like my crimson spores, because this is kind of a crimsony color. So yeah, I just, these were so much fun to knit. And like I said, panic, <laughs> panic and fun. But yeah, again, the foot looks really long, but these fit great. I love ribbed socks, the way they mold to your foot. Um, so I definitely needed some more. And I'm so excited to wear these this fall. What more can I say? I did actually have one more finished object, which I don't have with me. It was a gift, so I'll put a picture of it up here. But it's called... Oh, man. <laughs> it's a bonnet. It's called the... I'm not even going to say. I don't remember. I'll just put it up here. You can look up here. The name will be up here. Um, but it's a free pattern. I've knit this in the past. Maybe a few. Yeah, it was not that long ago. It was a couple months ago. I knit this for one of Logan's co-workers who's having a baby. And it's just a nice little bonnet. I did knit the DK weight size though. So there's two patterns. They're both free. One's a fingering weight bonnet and one is a DK weight bonnet, which is just a little thicker. And so I knit the DK weight one this time because I think the baby will be born in like October, November. So it's just a little winter hat. I knit the size three month, I think, or like one to three month. Um, and I knit it in this nice yarn, which is Barocco Ultra Wool DK. It's just nice oatmeal-y, very neutral color. This was a baby boy. I just wanted something neutral. I did omit the ears. The bear ears are kind of what gives the pattern its name, like what it's known for, um, or what makes it look, I don't know, just like a defining factor. But I did omit the ears just because I'm not real sure. Like I love little baby bear ears, but I don't know about other people. So I just wanted it to be neutral. Something that, you know, anyone would hopefully like and put on their baby. Um, yeah, I love this yarn. I used this yarn for one of Wilder's sweaters whenever he was a little baby. I actually went through a bunch of his clothes yesterday to put them in storage. And I found some of his little sweaters and beanies that I knit him whenever he was a newborn. And I just cannot believe that he was that small. They're so tiny and cute. So anyways, I knit his teddy sweater or whatever sweater that's called by petite knit in this wool and i guess i had two balls and i have a whole ball left over i have a lot of this yarn <laughs> the bonnet did not does not take much yarn at all like a minimal amount of yarn so 
I think I want to pair this with something and make a cowl. Because I don't have a cowl and I have plans to be outside a lot this fall, winter. So yeah, and it feels really nice. It's 100% wool. I don't know if it's superwash actually. I don't think it is. Oh no, it is. It says 100% superwash. So, yeah, superwash. You can throw it in the washing machine or not. Um, so yeah, I might go back. I got this in my local yarn store. I kind of want to go back and get a contrast color to pair with it. Or maybe just, I should probably just look at my stash because I probably have something. But yeah, so that was really fun. Very quick knit. I knit that within like a couple nights of just evening knitting. Um, and yeah, I think I'll continue to knit this pattern for, you know, future gifts for babies. Um, let's see. What else do I have? Oh, okay. Um, next whip. Wow. Okay, so this coincides with my trip. I casted this on to be my plain knitting travel project. <gasps> wow, I haven't seen it like on camera or really, I haven't just like held it up and looked at it in a while, but so cute. Okay, so this is the North Port. I always get it confused. I can never remember it's North Point Beanie or North Port Beanie, but I think it's North Port Beanie. Uh, and it's a very mindless knit. So this is knit. I haven't knit a muscle burrow before, but I've watched lots of podcasts of people knitting them. And I'm pretty sure it's knit similarly. So you cast on for the top and you just knit forever. <laughs> and then you flip it inside. So this, what you see right here is actually going to be the inside of the hat. So you flip it inside, seam it together, and then flip this. So it'll be a, there'll be two layers like on my head and then four around the brim technically, but it's fingering weight yarn. Um, so I think it'll be a really nice fabric. Like I'm not sure if I could do this in a DK weight yarn here in my climate and it feel comfortable or like even be able to wear it because it won't be too hot. But I think with fingering weight yarn, it'll be perfect. I mean, because that's like we have Carhartt beanies and I think they're kind of the same construction. But this is, let's see, three by one ribbing. And oh, I, I love this. This helped me so much on the plane. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I guess I can talk a bit, a little life update about my trip trip was great. It was fun. Um, I had a work trip. I flew from Houston to Chicago, O'Hare. And yeah, we were in Chicago just for a minute. We were in Milwaukee, felt like for a minute too. It was a very short, like two day trip, but it was really fun. I got to meet all my coworkers in person because I work remote, if you don't know. I've never met them before. Um, so it was really fun to meet everyone in person. And yeah, this if I didn't have this, I don't know what I would be doing on that plane. I knit on this and watched a movie for both the plane ride there and the plane ride back, and that occupied me. I did meet some really nice people that I sat next to on the plane, so I definitely talked to them a bit. And they were frequent travelers, so they, uh, I don't know, they were just very kind. And, you know, I told them I didn't really travel that much. And they gave me, you know, some good tips and encouragement. And it was nice. I did not freak out on the plane. I've flown once before with Logan, my husband, and it was a few years ago. And I think just not doing it for so long in between times, I was really, really nervous. Which I've always had a fear of flying since I was a little, little kid. Um, but it was good. I had to swap out my battery and I was a little lopsided. But what was I saying? I got through TSA, no problem. Did not ask me to get out my knitting needles or anything. I did take wooden ones just in case. I actually don't even have, I had to get these needles. I guess this is an acquisition. Just US 2, 2.75 millimeter needles. I believe they are Clover, which is, I have a bamboo interchangeable needle set and they're Clover as well. I don't even know if that's gonna focus, but uh, yeah, I actually didn't even have metal needles. Usually I prefer to knit with metal needles but I didn't have any this size, so I did have to buy some. But that's okay, I needed them because I needed this project to keep me occupied, distracted, and it was a good flight. Um, my flight there was super easy, super smooth. 
I watched, what movie did I watch? Oh, I watched If with Ryan Reynolds and it was okay. It was a good movie, kept me occupied. And then on the way back though, I watched Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and that was a comforting watch. And that flight was bumpy, but it was okay. Uh, so yeah, and I, let's see, let's talk about the actual project, I guess. Uh, this is Sorella yarn and classic sock. I don't remember the color. I actually got this in a D stash. So I didn't buy this myself originally. I bought it off of someone else and I've been wanting to use it forever. It's fingering weight yarn. It's in this really pretty, kind of similar petrol color is like the socks I just showed you, the contrast color. And it's tonal so you can kind of see the differences because it's hand dyed and I love that. I'm not alternating skeins or anything, I'm just knitting. What else can I say about this? It's just really nice to knit. This pattern, I think this is going to be my go-to beanie pattern, hopefully. Um, I still, I guess I need to finish it and like see how it wears and stuff. But this pattern itself has maybe three or four types of yarn you can use. So it has different gauges. So fingering weight gauge, DK weight gauge, maybe worst of weight, maybe there's three. I was really only interested in the fingering weight for now because that's what I'm following. But yeah, so there's a few different yarn weights you can use with this pattern with different instructions for each. And then there's also a bunch of different sizes. There's I think there's a baby size, kid size, adult size, so I definitely want to knit one for Wilder, because why not? Um, I think he needs one, <laughs> and I haven't knit him anything in a while. So yeah, there's a bunch of different sizes, and there's also different options for the cast on. So there's a cast on option, which is called like beginner, where you just cast on the number of stitches you need for your beanie. So really, you're just casting on this wider amount, and then you knit longer and then I guess you just sew that into the top of the hat. I did the intermediate which is crown increases to like shape the crown. So I did this before my trip because I didn't want to mess with all the um, stitch markers on the plane. So I cast this on before and did this part and then just stuck to the ribbing for my actual travels. But yeah, it was really simple. You just do increases and I don't know. <laughs> I, I kind of wanted that extra shaping and I enjoy working from top down and increasing. I've done that in a couple different hats, I guess. And I just like the process. So I just figured why not. And I had time before my trip. So I did that. And like I said, stuck to ribbing. And I think I knit the majority of this on my trip, like four hours of flying <laughs> and a little bit in between, you know, like waiting for my flight at the airport and stuff. But I mean, when I, I, this kept me occupied if you cannot tell like I was I'm sure people looked at me and they're like what is she doing because I was like oh, just going going but yeah it was fun it was a good time and now I'm back <laughs> thank god <laughs> now I'm back on the ground in my home but yeah I actually have I looked at it a few days ago and I was like oh I think I'm like almost ready to <laughs> I was so delusional. I was like, I think I'm almost ready to start like the decreases. I don't have that much longer. No, I have like a long ways to go. I've measured it. I'm, I don't even think I'm halfway to the halfway mark yet, but that's okay. I'm not in any rush to make this. Like I said, it's hot as heck here still. Like I don't think I'll have to wear this until November probably, but I think it'll be really good to have. I need some more basic beanies. I say that to myself every time the fall or the winter comes around, I'm like, why did I knit any beanies, you know? So I'm glad I'm knitting this one. And it's just mindless. I think I'll take this on road trips because we'll be traveling back to our hometown quite a bit this month or next month. So it's going good. Let's see, I have one more. <laughs> one more work in progress. Actually, I have some socks that I paused before I went on my trip. I'm knitting a basic sock right now, which I showed in my last podcast. I'm on the second one. And again, I got to the hill flap and gusset and I just stopped. <laughs> so I need to finish that one. I won't show it though, because you might've seen it already. But this is my next work in progress. Oh my gosh, wowzers. Okay, this is called the Cove Sweater. I wanna call it the Clove Sweater, which is a totally different pattern that I have also knit, but it's called the Cove Sweater. And it is a oversized 
beautiful, beautiful worst to weight sweater. And I started this. I told myself I was going to wait to knit this until after my trip. I was like, this will be like a little treat. You know, you'll come back home, your trip will be, you know, all your panic will be gone. You'll be back home and you can knit on this. But I decided to start it because, I don't know, I was like, you will be back, right? Like, you will be back to keep working on this. So, yeah, I did start just the back panel before my trip, which was... I got back from my trip a week ago. <laughs> or in the real time right now. It was a week ago. So I did the back panel, but that was it. And I have knit this within seven days. Like, the majority of this, I knit this sleeve this past Saturday and I don't I'm not someone who knits all day like I just kind of knit in between I don't know watching my kid <laughs> and uh his nap time and before work sometimes and in the evening at night but well th <laughs> that kind of sounds like all day <laughs> but uh you know I don't I didn't just sit here and like knit on this thing all day but oh my gosh this has been so much fun. I have not knit a sweater for myself in a couple years. I've knit garments, like I just, you know, summer garments. Well, actually I did knit a sweater last year that just didn't pan out. It was a very thick, not thick, it was chunky, open weight gauge. Just didn't work out for me. But that was the last sweater I've knit and it was raglan, but I haven't knit a drop shoulder sweater in a while and I loved it. This is a modified drop shoulder sweater, so it's not a saddle shoulder. I don't think it's a true saddle shoulder, but it does kind of look like one because you do like increases right here along the edge. So to me, it kind of looks like a saddle shoulder, but I don't think it's a true saddle shoulder construction. I have never done a saddle shoulder construction before, so I don't know. But yeah, it says a modified drop shoulder in the pattern description. It's worse to weight. It has this two by two details ribbing. I love two by two in sweaters. It just looks so chunky and nice. And I did the sleeve. It's kind of a balloony sleeve. It has these really cool decorative decreases on the sleeve. I don't know if you can see that. It's, you can kind of see it better when I have it on, but there's like a decorative what am I saying? Decrease <laughs> kind of on the elbow. And then you do very slowly decreases along the side or along the underarm, but not many. It's kind of a balloony almost shape. And this is gonna be like my elevated sweatshirt. You know, I need a sweater like this that I can just throw on, get cozy. Cause my upstairs room that I work in, it's kind of like my office, gets really cold in the fall, winter. So I, I think this will be like the perfect little riding jumper, <laughs> jumper sweatshirt, sweater. Yeah, I love this. It's been so much fun to knit. Whenever I look at sweater patterns, I'm like, oh, that looks like a lot of work. And it is, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of knitting. But I forget how simple following instructions can be sometimes. <laughs> like all I have to do is follow the instructions and I'll have this, you know? And all the separate pieces were so simple to knit. Like, again, like I said, I just followed the instructions and it came to life. And I was like, wow, <laughs> who would have thought? So I am knitting this in Barocco Vintage Worsted Weight, which is one of my favorite yarns in the entire world. Barocco Vintage. in this teal, again, petrol almost color, which is not normal for me. Um, I have adopted this color as my new fall color. Usually I stick to oranges and reds and like crimsons, crimsons, crimsons. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I love this. It's kind of the color of my eyes almost. I mean, not quite. My eyes aren't that vibrant, but it just, I really like this color. It's 52% acrylic, 40% wool, 8% nylon. So it's mostly acrylic, but to me, it doesn't have that plasticky feel that some acrylic does. And it's so soft on the hands and it's so smooth to knit with. It doesn't really split for me that much. Um, it is, I don't see any pills, but I am sure it will pill eventually, but that's okay. Like I have a depiller, it'll be fine. 
I've knit with this yarn before in the past for sweaters and I love the way it feels even against my bare skin. Like I don't feel like I need to wear a shirt underneath it if I don't want to. Whereas some wools, I'm kind of sensitive toward wool I think, or like I said, I, I can feel it. <laughs> like it's a little itchy or scratchy. So I just, I really like the acrylic wool blend, how that feels. And it's so pretty. Look at this color, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm kind of in shock that I'm knitting something blue or teal. I mean, it's kind of grainy as well. So yeah, this is, this color is making an appearance in my wardrobe now and I'm here for it. So yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this other than it's fun and I would recommend it. I'm knitting the size, I'm knitting size C, which is the third size. And I did choose a size that was a little bit, actually no, this might be my exact bust size, like corresponds to my bust size. I almost knit the size B, but I was like, no, I want some room. I think I was kind of in between. So yeah, this one would be a bit oversized and I've tried it on and it is oversized, but not too oversized. The sleeve is right where I want it to. It just kind of goes right here, which I love. I'm someone who loves doing this with my sleeves. I'm not sure why. So yeah. It's, I'm so excited for this y'all. I'm so excited and I honestly think I could have this done by next weekend or in a week Because I've just I've been knitting on it. Oh Yes, so I've been knitting on this while watching The rings of power series on Amazon. I don't know if y'all have watched that or if you know what that is but it's the prequel to the Lord of the Rings and I just kind of came upon it before my trip <laughs> and I was like, maybe uh, I can download some episodes to watch on the plane if I need them. I ended up the plane had movies, so I didn't, but I watched an episode before my trip and I loved it. And so ever since I got back, I've just been watching it every night, like an episode. And now I caught up and the episodes are coming out weekly. <laughs> so I'm watching the Lord of the Rings movies in between, which I've always loved. It's like a comfort movie. So yeah. This has been my Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, sit and knit, stock and knit project, and I love it. I love it, and I'm so excited to have a sweater. This has sparked sweater knitting in me, and I have ordered yarn to make another sweater. I'll talk about that. I think I'm going to have a whole knitting plans video for garments and accessories and stuff in the future, like maybe in the next week or so. So I'll save that because I don't actually have the yarn with me, but... This has sparked something in me. This has sparked joy. <laughs> and I, I love knitting on this bad boy. Oh, I love her so much. So yeah. I don't know what else to say other than I recommend the pattern. It's super easy to read. It has... I don't actually know how many sizes it has. They're in like A, B, C, D. They're in number... Or not numbers. Letters. And I can't remember how far they go. But I recommend. This is fun. She's fun. Alrighty. That's all of my projects. So I will get into acquisitions because I have some and also I might talk just a bit about books I've been reading, listening to. But first I bought some yarn. <laughs> so yes, this is an acquisition. I think I panic bought this yarn before my trip, but that's okay. It happens. Um, but I do have a plan and a purpose for this yarn. So it is sock yarn. I bought this all from Wool Warehouse. This is new to me brand though. Honestly, it was on sale. <laughs> and it seemed like a dupe almost for Cascade Heritage, which I know a lot of yarns are kind of made up of the same fiber content for socks. So this is 75% merino wool, 25% nylon, and it is Yarnsmith's Merino Sock Superwash. So yeah, new to me brand. It was on sale. <laughs> That's kind of why I picked it, like I said. Um, but I do like the fiber content. This is similar to things I've used in the past but yeah look at this deep deep purple so I bought some sock yarn because I'm gonna make some more socks this was kind of in my major sock panic knitting mode and since then I've kind of paused so I haven't I really I got this right before my trip and then I set them aside and I haven't really looked at them that hard so this I need to admire them a bit but it's not even all of them oh my gosh so I got some colors <laughs> to make some socks. I don't think these have, these are like number colors, so I won't. Yeah, they're like weird numbers and letters. They're not, don't really have names, but I'll just show you each. So this is a pretty gray. 
I love this gray. This might be my favorite one. <laughs> I've always wanted some gray heathered socks. And then I got these two because I need to knit and I want to knit my Nana some Christmas socks for her Christmas present. And I need to start now because I don't want to be rushed around Christmas time. I know I want to knit Wilder some stuff because it's also his birthday's in December. I want to knit him some plushie or a plushie, like a little stuffed animal or something. So I need to start on these socks soon. My Nana's favorite colors are lavender and deep purple. So I got these. I was thinking originally I was going to make her some grow with the flower socks like this, but because of the fit, she has very long, narrow feet and I'm, I would hate to knit her color work socks and she not be able to put them on. Like I, I have no idea about how they would fit her foot. And honestly, that's with a lot of color work socks. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe I'll just stick to like a marl DK weight sock because she wears them around the house mostly. They're like house socks. So I think, um, yeah, like a marl DK would be nice. It's going to be so soft. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I need to knit her some socks with this. So pretty. I love this color in particular. It's like this very pretty lavender. And then I got some teal again. I'm just really in love with this color right now. So pretty. I'm not real sure what I'll knit with this. But, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and then I got some basic white and black. I always go to knit colorwork socks. Then I'm like, I just, I need some white and black. I don't have any. So I got these and honestly, I kind of want to knit some black and white go with the flowers with black is the main color, white is the contrast. I think that could be really nice and folly. I just love the high contrast. So yeah, I got some sock yarn to knit socks. And what else? I, oh yeah. I. I also bought some more yarn recently for a sweater, but I'll save that because I don't have it with me. It's not here yet. And I do want to make a fall knitting plans video. I did just film a fall sock pattern roundup video. I'm not sure if that'll come out before this podcast or after, but yeah, I have some fun stuff planned. And like I said, I've been knitting like crazy, so I'm excited to share more with y'all. What I've been reading... Let me think. I've kind of been in a reading slump recently. I think I was just so nervous for my trip. I needed something to do with my hands and my mind. So I really dove into knitting and knit a lot of socks and I just paused reading entirely and I haven't got back into it. So I'm still reading Dance of Thieves. I'm like maybe 50 pages in and I know I've heard a lot of people say that's a really good book and a really good duology. It apparently has a prequel series I did not know about. So yeah, I need to get on that one. It's a fantasy. It's YA. Not totally sure what it's about yet because I haven't gotten that far into it. But so far, it's good. I, I do remember I liked the writing at the beginning just from what I've read. So that's fun. And then I listened to some books <laughs> while panning knitting socks. I listened to We Were Liars. I'll try to, I'll maybe I'll put like covers up here so you can see. I came into this book not knowing what to expect. I honestly just went on Libby, which is an app. Uh, I think a lot of libraries have it, at least in the US, where it's like free books, free ebooks, free audiobooks within a library system. So I just go on there and I look at what's available <laughs> whenever I'm looking at audiobooks to listen to. And this one was available. It said it was popular or had been listened to a lot. So. I had no idea what genre this was going into it. I don't know why I thought it was YA and it, it might be, I don't know. No, there was some cursing. I don't know. It turns out it's like a mystery and I will tell you my thoughts. I came into this book for one, I am new to audiobooks and I'm very sensitive about, not sensitive, but like narrators kind of make it or break it for me. <laughs> and. I don't know, like something about this narrator that I, it was a character she was doing. She, like she herself was not a bad narrator at all. She's great at her job, but the character was very whiny to me and I did not love that. <laughs> and there was many things in this book at the, just throughout it. I was like, I do not want to finish this just because I did not like the main character personally. 
and now it's like in her point of view. Um, so there were many instances where I was like, I don't think I want to finish this. Like, I'm not really into this, but the mystery part of it was really intriguing to me. I was like, well, I gotta know what happened. So I continued to listen to it. And let me tell you, <laughs> I was knitting socks, okay? I was knitting socks on a lunch break. I know exactly where I was in the kitchen. And I was listening to this audiobook. And whenever the mystery, like the, it was finally revealed in my mouth, I stopped knitting and I was like this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, the plot twist. Wow, I'm, it's a book that I still think about. So I'm so glad that I did not stop reading it because everything in that book is intentional. If you have not read it or listened to it, highly recommend. Highly recommend. I think the author's genius. Yeah. I thought about that book for a while. I, I think I cried. <laughs> like, and a book hasn't affected me like that in a long time, given I usually read, you know, fantasy books. But yeah, that one sat with me. That one stuck with me and I was like, wow, that was a good book. And it was only six hours long, which is pretty short for an audiobook. And that is my preferred length. I have a hard time committing to really long audiobooks when I can only have like two weeks to check them out in Libby. So yeah, I recommend that one. That one was good. Um, <laughs> what else? Oh, I listened to an Emily Henry book. People We Meet on Vacation, I think is what it's called. Again, I'll put the picture up here. I have never listened or read Emily Henry, but I wanted something just like light and fun. And I don't really read contemporary romance at all. Really anything contemporary is odd for me. I'm like deep in fantasy world. And it was available on Libby. It said it was popular. So I was like, okay, I'll read it or listen to it. And it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I was laughing out loud. I really liked the narrator, even her man voice she did. I was like, okay, this isn't too disruptive. Um, I really enjoyed it. And it's definitely like a friends to lovers trope, grumpy versus not so grumpy, you know, love interest. And yeah, I really liked it. It was a really fun read. I don't think about it constantly. You know, it's not one that like left something on me but it was great listen just in the moment and I would like to read some more of her stuff. So yeah, that's all of the books I've been listening to, reading. I need to pick out some fall ones. Maybe within my fall knitting plans, I'll gather up some books that I have or like things I want to read and share them as well because I do tend to enjoy reading more in the fall. I need to get back into it, but yeah, y'all, that's it. That's all I've been doing <laughs> is uh, knitting, listening to books occasionally, watching Rings of Power in Lord of the Rings. So yeah, hope y'all have been having a good uh, September, wherever you are. Um, I hope you're knitting on stuff that you enjoy or doing things you enjoy. So yeah, thanks for sticking around and I guess I'll see y'all next time.